main sequence stars, the stars that are in the in the Hertzberg-Russell diagram as um, as in the main sequence. So the, the vast majority of stars are main sequence stars. So that's what we want to talk about today. All right. So before we kind of talk more about these main sequence stars, we want to talk about uh, something important here. It's the star's mass determines its core temperature. What do I mean by that? A star's mass determines its core temperature. So remember, there's different kinds of stars. There's low mass stars and high mass stars. Okay. So this has mass like our sun is a low mass star. It's got um, we would say it's got uh, the mass of our sun, and these are like ten masses of our suns. Okay. So the more massive star has a higher gravitational attraction than a less massive star. So if you think of gravity, gravity pushing down on a star, that's the blue arrow, right? Okay. But we have hydrostatic equilibrium. The, um, it requires um, a larger gravity for a massive star. So, for me, so you've got a more massive star, it's going to have to have a greater pressure because it's going to have to overcome the greater gravity. All right. So that helps us to understand that. Now let's talk about what's going on inside of stars. There's two different stars, of course, high and low mass stars. Now what's happening in the stars are different depending on what size star you have or what mass star you have, not really size. In the core, for a low mass star, we have something called the proton-proton chain. And that's illustrated here on the left, okay? where the red um, uh, circles here are protons and the grays are neutrons. And then we've got a thing called a positron. Not important that you know what all these things are. But as we have here, we have two protons, which are actually hydrogens. They get together and they can form, um, uh, well, a hydrogen with a, with a nucleus or, and a neutron. And this kind of gets out. That's going to make that work. And this, by the way, is the energy. This is where the energy comes. This little V, this, remember that stands for frequency and frequency is energy. And eventually they form actually helium. So right up here we have hydrogen, and then it turns into helium. They call it proton-proton chain because protons are bumping into each other at very high temperatures, causing the reaction to occur. Now that's in a low mass star. But in a high mass star, because there is much, much higher temperatures, something else goes on. It's called the CNO cycle. C standing for carbon, N for nitrogen, and O for oxygen. Okay, And you're starting with different elements, carbons, etc. So you still have hydrogen right here and some helium, and they, they get expelled. And we kind of get this circle. It's not that important, but carbon reacts with hydrogen to make nitrogen. The nitrogen then breaks down into carbons and what we call a positron, etc. You don't need to copy this down, but I want you to understand that in a high mass star, this applies to high mass stars right here, the nuclear reactions are different where they deal with the CNO, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen. You don't need to know all these reactions. But I think it's important to understand that there's a different reaction because you are at a much higher temperature in the core of a massive star versus a uh, low massive star. Okay? Now, so what's going on in terms of inside of these stars? Okay? So energy transport from the core. Remember, really, where is all the heat in a star being generated? Well, it's being generated in the core of a star. Okay, so the heat's not being generated on the outside, it's just being moved on the outside. So for a low mass star, okay, we have an inner radiative zone and an outer convection layer. When we did the sun in the previous chapter, we learned about the, the layers of the sun and how that works. Turns out, for a high mass star, it's actually reversed. You have an inner convection zone and an outer radiative layer. And then for all stars, the outer layers of gas are unavailable for fusion. I think the best way to do this is to just look at a picture. So if we look at this particular picture, here we have a high mass star. You've got the core right here, right? And notice that we have a convection zone right outside of that. And then this is the radiative zone. So this right here is radiative. And then further in, we have a convection. Okay, for our sun, again, we have the core right here. What do we have right here? Oh, yeah, that's the radiative zone. And then we have the convection zone. You see how they're reversed because of the mass of the star. So in a high mass star, the radiative and the convection zone are what? That's right, they're flipped. In a very low mass star, you don't have a radiative zone. You just have a convection only. That's not important. I mean, there's not too many stars that fit this category, but it's, it's interesting to note. 
Okay, another way to kind of look at this is to look inside of um, different stars. For a main sequence star, now these are appearing this is the same size and they're not. In the center of a main sequence star, you're going to do hydrogen burning or proton proton burning, right? Okay, and if we, uh, for a red giant star, you're going to have helium burning in the center, or helium core, but no thermonuclear reactions, and you're going to have the shell on the outside burning. Okay, if you get a red giant after the helium burning begins, then you, you can begin eventually, if you get enough mass, the helium will start to burn in the center. And so you kind of get a different ball game, and then you also still have the hydrogen burning shell. Okay, so they're like stages for a star. A star will move from this direction over to this direction. Okay, now how long does a star live? Okay. Well, the answer is more complex than you probably think. It's not like, well, this star will live this many years. It actually depends on the mass of the star. Essentially, here's the real kind of the gist. The bigger the star, the more massive the star, the shorter the life. And the less massive the star, the less massive or the less length of it will be. Okay, I didn't say that very well, but I think you understand. All right, so this time the star stays on the main sequence is called the main sequence lifetime. There you go. The amount of time... Uh, t, LMS, a star spend on the main sequence depends on its available fuel. Remember, the fuel is the mass of the star, okay? And how fast it consumes, which is its luminosity, how bright it is. So basically, it's going to be 0.1, because only, only uh, a portion of it will burn, of the mass divided by its luminosity. So now let's do a mathematical calculation. So you probably need to get, that's right, out your calculator. Everybody get your calculator out, okay? Okay, so let's take a look at this. Okay, here's our particular problem. So calculate the main sequence lifetime of a star that has a mass of 2 times 10 to the 30th kilogram and a luminosity of 3 times 10 to the 18th kilograms of hydrogen per year. Well, it's essentially a division problem. The TLMS, lifetime of main, in a main sequence star, is equal to the mass, basically over the luminosity. And uh, if they're in the same units, and they are, we're good to go. So we'll say 2 times 10 to the 30th, remember I'm going to substitute in my numbers, kilograms, divided by 3 times 10 to the 18th kilograms per year. Now just as a side note, units, kilograms, cancels, and since the years is on the bottom of the bottom of a fraction, it will then come on the top, and we're going to get X number of years. Now let's go and uh, look at our calculator. So remember, when I'm typing numbers into my calculator, do I push the times button? No! No, 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 do not push the times button. You're going to push the E, E button. All right, so I'm going to say 2, second function, double E. Now I know double E, and I get an E, I know. 30 divided by 3, second function, E, 18. Enter. And I get what? I get 6 point, let's call it 7, times 10 to the 11th years. All right, so that's, well, that's, a, that's got a long, one that's going to last a long time. That's a 67 billion years. That's longer than... Um, the universe has been around. Uh, probably my numbers are a little off. There. Probably this number should have been a higher number. It doesn't matter. That's how you do the math. I think on the worksheets and on the test, you'll get a more reasonable number. Um, but that's how you would do that. Okay? So that's not too bad, is it? Okay. So let's talk about the lifetimes of stars. So some more uh, uh, good pictures on how long a star will um, live. Okay. Um, for a star that has a, a mass of 1, this is our sun, it's going to have a, a lifetime of about 10 billion years. All right, so our sun is considered to last for about 10 billion years. If you've got double that amount, two of them, he's going to have, uh, and usually they have a, a luminosity of 20 luminosities, uh, only 1 billion years. Yeah, not very long. And if you get a really big star, 30M, because he's going to then have a really high luminosity because bigger ones are brighter, they burn their fuel faster, 3 million years. So he's going to die real fast. Now, 3 million years doesn't sound like a, sounds like a long time, but compared to 10 billion years, it's a, it's a very, very short period of time. All right. Good? All right. So that is.